Hello and welcome to Breakfast All Day. I'm Matt. That's Christy. That's Alonzo. Uh, and that is Sabrina uh, shaking her head and wandering around uh, because we're shooting at my house today. Uh, yeah. And for those people that are wondering, because somebody asked on one of the comments a while back, the figurines that they, somebody said, what are the figurines behind Matt? Those are my tiki mugs. That is my tiki mug collection. It's all the taboo idols that he's gotten in, in Hawaii. Yes, over the exactly. Uh, well, no, so most of them come from here. No, uh, it's a pretty fun reference. So, I got that. Thank you. Right. Uh, <laughs> Cousin Oliver. Yeah, I don't wear that. No, that was later. Bad things happen. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, speaking of cursed <laughs> objects, uh, oh, nice segue. Christy and I uh, watched a movie called In Fabric. Yes. Uh, Christy, would you like to describe it? I will. And I believe we talked about the trailer for this when the trailer came out because it did, just yeah. it looked so nutty that we wanted to talk about it. And then. Um, it came out a couple of weeks ago. It's available, streamable on Amazon, which is how I think you and I yeah. both watched it, Matt. It was at TIFF last year. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. A24 opened it in theaters like on a Friday, and the following Tuesday it was already available streaming. Yeah. So, so you can watch this yeah. if, you, if you are so inclined, and I recommend that you do because we liked it. So um, this, is, this is so specific in its look and in its vibe, and it is off-putting and off-kilter and yet it tries to invoke a very specific kind of fashion from like what like the 80s like mid 80s kind yeah, of yeah kind of it, it does not take place now it definitely takes place in the 80s marianne jean baptiste is a bank teller in london yeah and she goes to a department store to buy a dress. She is a single mom. She has a, a grown son. And she's relatively recently divorced. Right. And so she's trying to get back out there and, and try to date again. And this is so old that people have answering machines and they actually take out personal ads in the newspaper <laughs> with little descriptions of themselves and a right. box number that you can respond to. And so she has a date lined up and she wants to get a nice dress for it. And so she goes to this department store where we have already seen the ads for this place on television. And there's something kind of hypnotic about the repetitive nature of the imagery and like mannequins spinning around. Right, it's got a bit and of the, Videodrome to it. Yeah, the graphics are like big and bubbly and, and repetitive and how they play. But also it's like a 10th generation VHS copy and so it it's looks like, uh, really popping. fuzzy. Dave compared it to the Silver Shamrock ads in Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Oh. Yeah, I'll buy that. And then, you know, the way a lot of the movie shot and kind of like the way some of the, uh, you know, especially the more, um, the weirder parts of it, it feels very Dario Argento totally. in a lot of places. Totally, it's very lurid, giallo right. like that. So, but, yeah, go ahead. She, she goes there and she, she gets help from this one saleswoman. Fatma who, Muhammad. Fatma Muhammad. I was just about to look down at that. How do you know that? You haven't even seen because it. Because Dave is obsessed with Fatma Muhammad. He hasn't been talking. He's talked about little else since. Oh, since yeah. And you watch this movie, you don't understand it. why. I mean, but speaking of Dario Argento, you could imagine her being like one of the ballet instructors in oh, Suspiria. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's got like the hair and the cheekbones and this like really off-putting intensity about her and yet Very like you intense. can't stop watching her and she speaks she and everybody all the people who work at the department store speak in this kind of like it, really stilted like poorly translated english it, it actually felt really like weird. a very specific type of poetry to me okay like her her language is this very metaphorical poetry and you know about so the retail experience yeah <laughs> and so Baptiste will, you know, when she says, oh, I'm, I'm going on a date and then, you know, I, I won't get the, the line right, but it's, it's something like a dress for an evening out comes with a promise of pleasure. <laughs> and it's like that kind of stuff, right? right so this is how she's selling um, it. So but she, so much weirder and yes. so much more poetic. Yeah. So, um, so Marianne Jean-Baptiste buys this red dress. Artery and, red. Uh, what is that? Artery red. Artery red. Artery red. <laughs> and, um. It's, it's it kind of wraps across the front of her, and there's like a like a little like sequiny kind of beaded kind of brooch looking thing that where it's gathered at the side, and it fits her perfectly, even though on the tag it's not her size. Right, and it's a tried, smaller size. She tries it on, and she's amazed that it fits her, and it looks really lovely on her, and it kind of allows her to step out of her comfort zone in terms of what she would ordinarily wear. It makes her feel sexy and beautiful again. And it's very exciting, um, but then weird things start happening with the dress. Yes. And that's all I really want to say is that yes. weird things begin happening with the dress and then other people also have experiences with this dress and more weird things happen. Right. And um, 
I was mesmerized. It's long. It's like two hours long. And maybe it's a tad too slow and like a tad too hypnotic. Um, but the weird things that happen are genuinely disturbing. Yeah, there's this movie is very flawed, but I liked it a lot, mm -hmm. um, partly because of the way it's shot and the moodiness of it and, and some of the casting decisions. Um, we get to see, um, oh, now I'm blanking on her name, the, the, her son's girlfriend. Gwendolyn uh, Christie. Uh, Gwendolyn Christie playing oh. a completely different role right. than we've seen her do before. In fact, I didn't even know I, it was her at first. Right, when I first saw her, when she's first introduced on screen as his son's as her son's artist model and she's sitting in this weird like kind of yoga pose on the counter but she's like arm. a mannequin too kind of right. isn't she the way she ever right moves. and the wig yeah. that she's wearing um i was like oh that's gwendolyn christie mm -hmm. and and um she's super weird uh and then there's the movie about two-thirds of the way pivots in a direction that i really hadn't expected and i think that's part of what makes it go longer because i think the the story that we think we're getting maybe would not have lasted as long as it needed to be for a feature. Um, and I'm saying this obliquely so that I'm not giving too much mm -hmm. away. But it pivots in this di different direction, um, which is also interesting, you know, with the... with The, the, the washing machine The repair washing guy. machine repairman <laughs> and his fiancé um, is interesting and, and what's happening with them... Um, also, one of the things they keep peppering in is the two bosses that she works oh, for right. at the bank. And those guys are doing a parody of the corporate experience that you wouldn't exactly expect in a Monty Python film, but has shades of that. Like, it's this surrealist parody of the way that they talk about stuff. Almost like office space. Almost, but weirder, <laughs> yes. right? Like almost, like again, the, thing, the things they complain about are just right. nitpicky and bizarre. Now, yeah. right. I have not. Have you guys seen any of the other Peter Strickland no. movies? Yeah, Peter no. Strickland wrote and directed. He did Duke those, of yes. Burgundy, and he did Barbarian Sound System. I had not. And all of these films have like very devoted followings, and like he, he's considered a, a, a major sort of up and comer in British cinema. And I yeah. need to get caught up with him. Yeah, but. yeah, I've not seen either of those, but, but there's a very specific vision and voice at work here. Mm. Um, and it's kind of daring and bizarre and hilarious. And like the attention to detail as far as like the fingernails and the, the, the details of the font in the commercial and how it's almost like a, like a siren song that calls out to people. I, I guess the whole thing is like an indictment of consumerism mm. because the, the way that these people fall under the spell where they're like first thing in the morning pounding on the glass and all anyone can talk about is, what did you get at the sales yesterday? Right. So I, I have to assume it's like a, a, an indictment of materialism, consumerism, and how it is like being cursed, like falling under a spell and being cursed. Right, but it's also going for some comedy, and not in yeah. a broad way. Like it's a, it's an extremely dark comedy it's in a surreal. lot of places, and yeah, very mm -hmm. like, very surreal, but in a good way, not in a bad way, like cats and like yeah, <laughs> and like some weirdly graphic sexuality out of nowhere that's yeah. just shocking. Yeah. Yeah. It's gross and shocking. Is it more horror film or dark satire or all it's of the above? Both. I mean. Horrific things happen. Right. But I think it's also trying to say something about society. So I think mm. it's trying to achieve both simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. And I mm. and it's also knowingly playing with the type of trope you would expect out of an Argento movie. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's also like kind of riffing on that in some places too. Like aesthetically? Yeah. Not just aesthetically, but like you know, the like one of the particularly shocking scenes. That, you know, there's, you start to think, like, is the staff of this store a coven? Mm -hmm. And so there's a scene with, with they're doing some ritual over a mannequin. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. That it's really, it's bizarre. It's <laughs> super bizarre. And it's like, oh, he's taking the piss here. And yet you can't turn away. Right, you kind of can't take away. But it's like, oh, he's, this is a little bit like. I'm going to take an Argento scene way too far. Yeah, Ma right? yeah maybe. Maybe yeah. that's what that was. It makes sense. It's a, yeah. a good interpretation. Anyway, I kind of dug it. So if you're looking for something weird to watch with the family this holiday season. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, this is absolutely another, this is the second movie that we've talked about today that absolutely will get the, what the hell did I just watch kind of treatment, <laughs> but in a really good way. I was going to say, this is in a good way, though. Yeah. yeah I, I enjoyed it. So I'm saying 7.5. Uh, that's what I'm saying, too. Yeah. And, you know, this is a movie that's, that, 
is unique and it's something that you kind of, I mean, as much as we're talking about it's riffing on certain things, like we haven't seen, I haven't seen something like this before. And it's, you know, or at least in this way. I mean, it's like an evil version of Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> 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 so you have seen it, but you saw the, you right. saw the happy, lighthearted, I, empowering we've some, version of it. I, there's been some like freaky movies that we've had this December that I'm really excited about. Like we have the Evil Dress movie, mm-hmm. this movie, and then we have the Evil Flower movie, which was Little Joe. Oh yes, uh, Little Joe was evil. Yeah. Um, so our numbers same shade of red. Yes, exactly. that's true. All British. <laughs> so our numbers are seven point five. It's at ninety four percent on the tomato meter. So yeah, do do if you want something different from the blockbusters and the feel-good stuff. This is for you. Cool. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, Like this video. Subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. And uh, follow us at the social medias, uh, at BeFastAllDay on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And uh, why not pay a visit to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFastAllDay, where we are recapping television. We're getting towards the end of the season for a bunch of great shows right now. Watchmen, Mandalorian, Morning Show, His Dark Materials. Uh, We got a review of Klaus, the Netflix uh, animated film, because our 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 patrons demanded it, and uh, we'll have lots more fun stuff in the new year. So do check that out. And if you've already joined, thanks so much. We appreciate it, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.